right, you guys, another Monday, another video. Today, I was able to work in a little bit of my sketching process. You're gonna see me doodling up things that I am very much so not used to doodling. And um, I don't know, you're just gonna kind of watch me complete the sketchbook spread, both pages, and have a fun time doing it. So if that sounds like something you would enjoy, I'm Rory Fluent, feel free to call me Rory. If you're new around here, hi, hello, how are you? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I like to create dope art content and hopefully curate a chill atmosphere. And if you're not new around here, what is up my dudes? Let's get into this video. Currently in the video, I am just sketching away. You know, I don't always uh, include this process in my video, uh, the finalized video anyways. Like sometimes I film it and like, it's just, I don't know. I feel like you guys don't always have the ability to see on the screen what I'm doodling. I think I'm just like very light-handed with my sketches and so it doesn't always make for the most interesting or engaging content because you can't really tell what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> That being said, I, I just don't always see a point in including it in a video, but I don't know, I felt like it'd been a while since I'd done that, so I went ahead and included some sketching here. If you can't tell, I am going ahead and doodling a whole spread dedicated to bugs, specifically pill bugs. I know at the beginning of the intro, I mentioned that I was sketching things I don't normally sketch, and while it is true, I am quite fond of doodling up some good pill bugs. Kinda similar to the way I was talking about frogs in the last video, I feel like pill bugs are just small and round and they kind of look a little squishy and I was having a lot of fun doodling them up. And I don't know, like making these little bug guys and just kind of using my imagination, stretching out their legs, making them, I don't know, a little bit more interesting, putting my own flair on it, I guess. I ended up figuring out that there are these small little pill bug looking or roly poly looking creatures that like live in the bottom of the ocean and there's like all kinds of different like isopods and I was having a lot of fun just kind of, I don't know, pulling from those images and that kind of inspiration to create the entire spread. And you'll see here in a little bit that I do end up doodling like a rhino beetle, which that's something I've definitely never done before. So that was kind of a little bit of a fiasco and kind of helps me ease into a little bit of the point of like the, I guess, quote unquote, theme of the video that I'm going for, which is, I don't know, I kind of just wanted to chat a little bit. Oh my God. So like to put a pin in it for a second, at the moment, I am currently trying to not say I don't know so much. And in the process of trying to like stop myself from saying it, I am saying it way more. So please bear with me while I try to break this habit. <laughs> Back to what I was talking about though, I kind of wanted to sit down and chat a little bit about how it can be really, I don't know, disheartening a little bit to try and sketch something that you've never drawn before and to feel like you're just starting from square one. Sometimes when you're doodling up a new thing, it genuinely feels like your hand just has no idea what it's doing and <laughs> you kind of have an idea of what you want to doodle or how you want to doodle it and it's just not coming across the page very well. It's kind of insane to me how it almost feels like it puts you back, you know, like five years of drawing and painting and all of that when you try to draw a new thing because you're just so unfamiliar with the shapes and the proportions and not to mention figuring out how those shapes and proportions might actually like coexist within your style and how you want to represent something. There are so many things that I've drawn before that I've changed the way that I draw them now because I didn't feel like they were accurately representing the way that I want to represent the world around me and to present the world around me to you guys. And sometimes that takes a few different iterations of a thing before you really uh, figure out how it is that you want to portray something. And that was kind of happening with the rhino beetle a little bit. Honestly, it was even happening with the pill bugs where I was like, do I want to add eyeballs to them? Like, what do I want to do? Are they just like little shells? I just was kind of like lost on how I wanted to represent these guys. And that's what I wanted to dedicate this spread to was figuring it out. And I guess my point is just that I, I'm sure it's totally normal to feel a little bit discouraged or a little bit like, ah, why is this turning out so bad? Maybe even frustrated because you don't feel like something is turning out the way you want it to probably, or at least in this specific case, because I hadn't ever drawn a bug like that before. I mean, I don't think I've ever painted like, like, um, bug wings on something um, at least not in the current style and I guess like process that I have now. I literally have no recollection of drawing anything like a bug with its wing spread. 
So because of that, I was kind of struggling a little bit with how to represent it and make it fit within um, how casually and easily the pill bugs and the way that I wanted to draw the pill bugs was coming to me. It just wasn't totally matching up like this giant uh, rhino beetle or whatever the fuck they're called right in the middle of the page was almost like really distracting and jarring because I just and you'll see as I start to paint, I just kept, you know, fucking with it and trying to alter what was going on until I was able to figure out um, representation of the rhino bug that I was actually happy with. <laughs> And for me personally, I'm not hellbent on leaving my sketchbook as a sketchbook and not changing or altering things. So I was perfectly okay with kind of going over certain things with gouache and editing and removing and adding until I figured out the right combination of bits and pieces to get that rhino beetle to look at least a little bit how I wanted it to. I won't say it's perfect, but for a first try, I'm pretty stoked. You'll see as I finish up sketching that I'm just filling in all the little odds and ends with little creatures. Some of them are closer to uh, like actual representations of what the bugs look like and other ones were just straight out of my head like an amalgamation of bug pieces and parts and just trying to see what I could come up with just from my own brain using the references that I was using from Pinterest. Don't panic the um, like flare, the slightly illuminated flare that's happening on the video camera. I did fix from last time and it's only here for like a moment or two and then it goes away. Uh, I'm sure that it was just because like the, some oil or something got on my camera lens and it kind of makes it look like blown out or um, a little bit fuzzy and just like everything's a bit exposed, like it's overexposed. But that'll go away here in just a second and then everything will be perfect and peachy and nothing will be wrong. <laughs> If you have no idea what I'm talking about, feel free to look at my last video because it was just an absolute hassle trying to figure out what was going on with my camera when I was editing. Because while I was watching the footage, like while I was painting, it looked fine. But then I uploaded it and I was like, wow, everything is really washed out. And there's like this glare going on and it was just like not a good time. But thankfully it does not happen in this video except for like a little bit right here. And um, it will go away, I promise. I start out with some soft green, soft yellows, and then this really nice, like, pinky purpley color. It's um, Schminka from one of their sets. If I remember correctly, it's called, like, Volcano Violet or Volcano Purple, and uh, I was just really stoked to get it. I got it for Christmas, haven't used it a whole bunch, and, I mean, it's really not a color that I gravitate towards too much, but I was trying to push myself to use it, and you'll see that I kind of go back on that a little bit, decided to go more, like, green, yellow, and blue, which are colors that I'm a little bit more comfortable with, and um, I do end up adding more of this Volcano Violet at the end, but it's not quite as much the, like, star of the show as it is now. I, I don't know if something about it wasn't sitting around with me. 
I can be very, very picky with my colors, so I feel like sometimes I just have to ease myself into using new ones and figuring out if they're the vibe, if I genuinely enjoy painting with them, and if they're going to, I don't know, add to the spread or the color scheme what I want them to. Like outside of art, I love dark moody color schemes, but then like in my art, I prefer earthier colors, obviously like Naples yellow, earth green, literally sepia or sepia. Um, those are like some huge favorites, but like I also want to use like Sodalite Genuine from, uh, oh my God, Daniel Smith and Lunar Violet from the same brand. And then you have other like indigos. I love the indigo from St. Petersburg White Nights and um, Roman Small has some gorgeous grays as well. But then I feel like I never use them in my sketchbook. So actually, as I'm talking about this right now, I want to know in my brain, currently at the moment, that I need to use more grays. I think I am going, I'll do that in my next sketchbook spread. I will use more grays. I'm not sure why I decided to start kind of in the middle of the spread with these bugs, but I guess it was just the ones I was gravitating towards. And I was kind of interested in figuring out how to do this rhino beetle. And uh, you'll see as I start to uh, go in and make some edits that I start adding gouache pretty early because I've just become really fond of gouache. And I, I really like the weird like opaque layering that I can do that is so different and unfamiliar to me than um, what you can do with watercolor, which is obviously very translucent and when you um layer on top of each other or layer like different colors and glaze um and allow bits and pieces to dry in between uh, it just ends up with a completely different look than if you're layering with gouache you can actually see um the large pill bug in the center of the sketchbook um all of that sort of texture that you're seeing is only watercolor and then just what you saw me going with a slightly more opaque um white based green around the edges that's the only gouache that's on that bug right now so i was kind of also experimenting a little bit with layering with watercolor and seeing if that texture was something that i enjoyed or if i liked i don't know like more smooth and opaque layering like what you can get with gouache Obviously, you could use a technique like dry brushing with gouache and achieve something sort of similar with that like rough, sketchy feel, but I don't know, there's something about the watercolor and the overlaying uh, and letting each layer dry in between and then adding more and it being sort of like, I don't know, peeling away the layers of an onion and gradually building up those darks. That was a lot of fun to me and I just felt like would be a really handy thing to do to um, I guess emphasize the sort of like textures and light reflections that go on on like a shell like one that you would see on an isopod or something like that or a roly-bully. <laughs> You can see as I'm continuing to push the gouache, um, my cat decides to come in quite a few times for some interruptions <laughs> and some camera bumps to uh, see if he can get my attention. <laughs> I'm watching the footage obviously back right now and it's just really funny to see him stepping all over everything. As I build more confidence with this spread, I start to add more colors. So I get like titanium buff, Naples yellow, earth green. I believe it was sodalite genuine mixed with the volcano violet that uh, is happening sort of in the middle of the left page that I'm working on currently. And then you have some Payne's gray. And uh, yeah, I was kind of using a lot more colors than I normally do, but I was doing that on purpose to push myself a little bit. 
I feel like often with the color palettes that I'm using, I tend to go like monochromatic with each individual doodle that I am trying to complete. And in doing so, sometimes I like lose track of using other colors in that doodle. <laughs> And I was trying really, really hard to utilize the colors to the best of my ability and with each other so that they, I don't know, looked a little bit more cohesive and it looked a little bit more intentional. It wasn't just a bunch of monochromatic blobs across the page. Ah, and it was currently here in the video where I started to get really excited. Everything was really coming together. I was adding the little, like, I don't know, are they antenna on the, like, pill bugs? And, oh my god, that one um, that I was talking about that's made predominantly of the earth green with a little bit of gouache. I was having so much fun adding texture and layering. And it just, oh my god, I forgot how good it ended up looking. <laughs> I thought that I um, was kind of done with it uh, at the beginning of the video after I started painting. I forgot that I kept going with layering and really tried to figure out the best way to get this bug to look the way that I wanted it to and I'm so happy with it, oh my god. <laughs> I was really feeling myself and enjoying this particular page of the spread. I was just having a lot of fun going in with small details, um, even using some colored pencil, which I've been shying away from recently, and just, I don't know, really going ham on the texture with these bugs. But it didn't feel like texture that was overworked or, I don't know, was like trying too hard to be texture. I'm sure if you've watched my other videos, you know that that's something I have been toying with for probably since the beginning of starting this YouTube channel like eight months ago. And um, so it was really rewarding with this page to be like, oh, okay. So at least when it comes to these bugs and this sort of like shell-like texture, this is how I want to achieve and represent that texture traditionally. You can definitely see like in the video, I know there's not like a ton happening and there's still a whole other like page to finish of this spread, but I was just really taking my time with all of these little details, trying to make sure that I was, I, don't know, I guess like figuring everything out and making sure that everything looked the way that I wanted it to because I was a little tired of feeling like only a couple of the sketches were turning out the way I wanted to on spreads. I really, really, really wanted this to be a big win and I definitely feel like it was.
as always, there is just something about adding in that line work that always pulls everything together. <laughs> All of those little bits of black and I don't know, just the textures that I was able to achieve, not just with the color, but also with the uh, brush pen that I'm using, which is the same Copic brush pen I've been using for a couple of uh, videos now. There was something about that that was just making me really happy and I was like, oh my God, it's working. <laughs> Here you see that I am continuing to fiddle with that rhino beetle. I am kind of figuring it out. We end up getting to a point that I'm really happy with where he looks kind of stupid and goofy, but in a way that makes me laugh, which if you've been around here for a little while, you know that that is always my goal. It's an extra bonus if my doodles make you guys laugh, but I definitely want them to make me laugh. <laughs> And we do get there with that rhino beetle. It just, I don't know, there was something about it that was making it take forever. Looking at it now, I definitely think it was um, like the angle that I was drawing the rhino beetle from that was causing me to struggle quite a lot. Something about like the curve of the weird little like bits that poke out of the shell. And I, I don't know, like I said, it was looking a little bit too serious, a little bit too realistic and not strange enough. And so I do end up adding like little eyeballs, which you guys will see. <laughs> you guys will see as I finish up the line work, uh, cause that's when they really kind of like pop out at you a little bit. And I end up actually really liking him, which is cool. I get a little fed up with just staring at him and not being able to really like figure out what's going on so I end up inking him like um, when I'm not even done with the page yet because I was literally just like okay I need him to look good and I need, <laughs> I need this rhino beetle to like work and uh, he did definitely I was I was happy with it. <laughs> I'm not totally sure. I guess maybe it was just like the types of bugs that I was doodling. Not that, I mean, there are a couple like pill bugs there, but it didn't feel like this page in the spread. Um, I don't know. It didn't need to be as, or didn't end up being as detailed. And so it didn't take quite as long to finish. It's funny how I feel like sometimes that happens to me where I'll like complete one page of the spread and it'll end up just taking me like a really long time but then I do the same thing on the other page and it's a lot quicker and I know that's because like I'm just like used to it at that point or I've got a better understanding of what I'm trying to achieve so I know how to do it more efficiently. It's just funny to see the difference in like the footage right now because like, I don't know, a solid 10 minutes of this video was the first spread and then the um, second or the first page and then like the second page is only like five or six minutes. <laughs> That being said, I guess I did work on the rhino beetle, which is like half of this particular page of this red um, during the completion of the other page. So I guess that's really actually not a fair comparison. But either way, you'll see me like fiddle with the colors on this page and just kind of work in, um, oh, what is that color? It's like, it's called like Gothite from Roman Small, the orangey color. I really, really liked it. I just felt like the yellow could use a bit of a compliment and I thought the orange played really well off of it. So I decided to add it in here on this spread and then a little bit or add it in here on this page. And then um, it appears just a little bit in some of the detail work on the other page. So it kind of ties them in together. I try really hard to make the entire spread cohesive and thematic. So it's kind of important to me that they work really well together as a set, um, both compositionally, but also like color wise and just in look and feel. And I say all of that about texture and like detail work, but you know, now that I'm looking at this, no, I definitely was just working way more efficiently because these guys definitely have a lot of detail going on to them. It just always gets me like watching the footage back and seeing how long all of this takes because um, before I edit it and like, uh, cut it down and speed it up. It's like two hours of footage. I mean, this particular spread took me a while. I'd say on average, it take about like an hour for a given sketchbook spread. This one, I was just really having a lot of fun and adding a lot of detail and maybe that'll become the normal for my spreads from now on because it was very successful and I'm very happy with the way that this turned out.
but it's it's just always really funny to me because I somehow cut all the footage down and speed it up to the point where uh, I can get it to about 20 to 30 minutes and I obviously do that that's like my goal for every video um, along with like picking a theme or something to chat about so that throughout most of the video I'm chatting with you guys uh, because personally that's the kind of art content that I really enjoy is when I sit down and um, you know go to pull something up and I feel like I'm connecting with the person that's on the screen and it's not just me music playing in a sketchbook spread. But that's just me. I'm not saying that those kinds of videos are bad or anything like that. It's just what I prefer, so it's what I want to make. And with these final swatches, I add a little doodle in the corner, which you guys will see here as I pan over the entire spread. And that is the end of this video. As always, I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. I appreciate all the engagement I've been getting. I'm so, so close to a thousand subscribers, which is just so invigorating. I'm like really excited. It's just like, I don't know, it's a really cool little milestone. It's like hitting your first subscriber, your 100th, and your 1,000th. Like, what the fuck? No way. But uh, yeah, we're getting really close. And I'm just really glad that there are people out there who are enjoying this art community. And um, I don't know, joining me on my art journey. I am so happy to give people a space to create more art and, um, I don't know, just a friendly space to be a part of. And so <laughs> I'm going to cut the rambling off because I always ramble at the end of these videos and just say that I appreciate all of your support. Feel free to do the youtube -y things like comment, subscribe. If you don't know what to comment, comment algorithm. And I will hopefully talk to you guys in the next video. Bye!